Uh, Welcome. We're going to make baby penguins today. We made these the first time, was it December? I think so. Before the holidays and um, for, as a felt along. So there is a felt along video out there for the baby penguins. But now we have the supply pack and we're going to film using the supply pack and um, with the overhead camera and a little less chatter and really just show uh, show how this beginner project is done. You ready? Uh, you, I, I think so. You have penguin news or? Well, there's lots of penguiny stuff out there. Awesome. We, we could start with the joke. Okay, let's hear it. What is black and white and goes round and round and round? A penguin on a merry-go-round. It, it, it could be. I was looking for a penguin <laughs> in a it? revolving door. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, same idea. Yeah, mine was not funny at all. Well, I don't know that the door was so much either, but... <laughs> that, does that mean we need to improve a little? Improve what? The jokes. <laughs> yeah, let's work all on right, it. All right, I'll work on that. <laughs> all right, I have um, my needles, my felting surface. I do use a uh, Zuli tool and a face ace in this tutorial, but if you don't have them, you could just fold in your hands and um, you'll be okay. And then the supply pack. Ooh, five, makes five. <laughs> What's a bunch of baby penguins called, Milo? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure um, it has a clever name. I'm sure. I mean colony, but I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Okay, your um, your armature is a pipe cleaner, and the bulk of the project is made with the gray core. All the fluff is um, three colors of merino, and then we have a few accents accent colors. So I'm going to put those two bundles aside for now and everything but one pipe cleaner. And we're going to make our armature. Colony was in there, but a group of penguins in the water is called a raft. Oh. But on the land, they're called a waddle. <laughs> That's so funny. I have a different name when I'm in the water, too. You do? <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Water goddess. <laughs> but I wish I did. Okay, I want to twist my pipe cleaner. I folded it in half and I'm just gently twisting, not super tight, to four and a half inches. Okay, and that leaves about an inch and a half of um, remaining pipe cleaner. And those are gonna be his little feet. And you want to fold those back to one inch. And then we're gonna give the penguin, I do have some notes that I probably will need to refer to because it's been a little while. Um, we're gonna fold about three quarters of an inch over for the head and I like to give, um, break this up into a little, like, a little cane shape. This is, this is the nose and then this is the head. Oh, I can't see. You got to see. Is that showing up okay? Yeah. Okay. So that's your armature. And if you want to just make, you know, make all five, uh, you can totally do that. All right, we are going to need our black first thing. It's in this bundle. This bundle has black and Serafina white. Oh, this black is like super thick. Our, um, our rovings, they sometimes come in, this is a little thicker than, than normal. And the gray is actually a little thinner than this, so you may need to, usually I give instruction based on a length, so you may need to adjust um, the amount a little bit. But we want to take uh, about a three to four inch piece. 
And when you pull this roving, it's a pretty short staple. So if you hold it really close, you won't be able to pull it apart. But if you just give your hands a little bit of distance, you can, you can pull it apart. And then we want to break this down into usually I would say quarters, but like I said, this is on the thick side. So I'm going to quarter like half my quarters. But you want a thin strip that's about half an inch by about three inches. And each one of these is going to go onto a foot. Now, when I wrap the feet, I want to get this relatively tight because we are going to make a little triangular sort of penguin foot shape to go on top of this like this guy has, it's getting a little covered by all of his belly and everything. But um, the tighter you can wrap it, then the more secure it is and the less stabbing you have to do. When I get to the end of something, a foot or an armature or a tool, and I want this to have a secure end I'm going to I'm not going to linger there and go straight around because then the wool wants to slip off of the end I'm going to come to the end and turn right around and go back and all the while I'm keeping my ribbon flat and tight and I'm keeping my fingers um, very close to the project so that my roving doesn't come apart and if you have a ton extra just pull it off uh, but if you don't you can just secure it around the body. So this little skinny bits is like actually the one of the trickier parts. We have to start off with the tricky part. What do you call a cold penguin? <laughs> I don't know what. A bird. <laughs> So now I have a good base for both of my feet. And I'm going to take one, another one of those strips and do the beak. And I, I already can tell this is going to be a little bit too much because I, I almost, I don't need quite as much as I had on the feet, but I can start on the head. I don't have to stay only where the beak is because this is going to get covered with gray. And this, I definitely want to be as tight as possible because it doesn't get any further pieces to it. So come out to the tip and then turn around and go back. We're going for a very subtle cone shape on that beak. I just keep moving these threads of fibers around until it's all smooth. Yeah, yeah, this is the trickiest part of the whole project. Mm -hmm. Probably. But learning to wrap um, a wire is such a, um, it's such a great skill to develop because any animal you make, once you have a nice armature, you can really build, um, build the entire animal from there. Okay, now we need two like one inch piles. I'm pulling from that other half of black. It has a little bit of a... So if you are if you have like a long piece, pull it apart and restack it so that it's a nice even one inch square of wool. This one's already pretty good. And put them horizontally on your felting surface so the fibers are running across. Um, I usually stab a center line just so I like I know where I am in the you can really feel how much wool there is on each side. And then we want to make a triangle with the top being the flat part. So I'm going to stab across about a quarter inch from the top of the wool and fold that in. And 
We always recommend watching the tutorial first and then felting. And then I'm gonna stab a V shape on each side and bring that fiber in. This is kind of the opposite of most of the triangles we make have the point at the top, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't want to do too, too much because now I've got to shape it and stab it into place. So I just want to felt enough to secure the shape. Um, you can see how I sort of, I had to pull it out of my felting surface. The more you stab with a stronger needle, the more embedded it becomes in your felting surface. And then these go onto the feet with the fringe going back towards the body. If you feel like your shape <clears throat> is way too big, just pull the fringe off the back, off of the, um, the narrow side. So at first, I'm just gonna anchor it to the wrapped foot wire. <laughs> She's got these great big duck feet. So funny. So just from the top, I'm centering it over that wrapped foot wire. And then I'm gonna start to create little toes by denting the fiber in, the center toe being over that wire that's underneath and the two outer toes being made just by the triangle shape. It's, it's subtle, but these are tiny little these are basically little ornaments, so there's not a ton of detail here. But I do like, I was making them without, um, without any additional feet, um, just the black wrapped foot, but I do like the way this looks. You can try both and see which you like. But the needles shape this little, these little toe dents. The little feet help them stand a little. They do, too, right? I think they do, yeah. All right, now we need our core wool. And we're gonna work with um, about eight inch strips. This gray core is a little thinner than usual. I'm still going to pull each strip in half, but it might not get me as far as the gray core that's in your kit. So we just have to see um, see how things look after we use the allotted amount and see if we need more. And each one of these strips is going to get wrapped onto the body. So I'm going to start by just going from the bottom of the body up. It doesn't matter if you go from the top to the bottom, whichever feels more comfortable um, for you in wrapping. I do usually wrap away from myself. I feel like it just gives me a little bit of a better um, tug on the fiber as it comes around. When you're wrapping towards yourself, you're limited by your own personal space. <laughs> so I'm gonna just go right on up here towards his head. And I'm gonna turn back around because I'm gonna wrap the head with a different piece. So any extra is just coming back down. And if I wrap smoothly and somewhat tightly, I don't have to stab. So the next piece, I'm gonna start on um, the neck and I'm gonna do a special wrap that we use um, pretty often, it's a good one to know, to start to build the head into a circle. Now I'm left-handed, so you know, you'll see me going this way. If you're right-handed, you're going to hold your work in your left hand, start your fiber away from you and wrap this way. But I have to do it left-handed. Okay, so we have this little hook in the head. It's, it's pretty subtle, but I wanna go around the back of the head and then go around the forehead and then go back around the back of the head and then around the forehead, rather than just wrapping it like a log. And that creates this rounded shape to the head. So it's a, it's a crisscross coming underneath the chin each time. And then at the end, I can just go around the whole thing. 
and that gives us a nice little um, sort of round shaped head on which to build. If we were to just wrap out and back, it would just turn into a log. But this technique gives us this, this roundness. So you're stabbing that kind of away from the beak to keep to, yeah, to, some beak. To, to build that round forehead and the direction that you stab has a big influence on the project. Um, so the, the needles are like your fingers kind of like sculpting in, in clay. With these last two pieces, we're going to wrap the body again. So we just want to use up all four of our pieces. And as I wrap the body, I kind of want to think about the base being a little wider than the neck. So you're wrapping and smoothing that in to the point that you did not even need to stab. Mm, right. And if you need to stab, that's okay. This one I'm going to turn around and come back down so that more of the wool lands um, closer to the base. Like how long you linger in one spot before you start to move up um, is a big um, contributor to where the wool goes. It takes a little bit of time and practice to control and anticipate um, uh, sort of all of the ways that you can get wool to go where you want it. So this is a really, this is a great project to start to uh, develop all of that. So now we need to make a few pillows and the pillows are going to start to give our penguin like this um, sort of like a bowling, what's that called? A bowling ball pin, <laughs> a bowling okay. ball pin yeah. shape. Yeah. So let's take um, two more eight inch pieces. And split them in half. And I'm going to wrap the Zuli tool. It just gives us a nice consistent um, shape. And I'm going to take each of these and make a two inch shape. Okay. When we wrap on a tool, we want to be able to go out and back. And because this roving is a little on the thin side, my two inch shape only went out. So I'm going to take a second piece, start here and go back. And going out and back gives the shape the integrity. If you just go one direction, when you slide it off the tool, it tends to unravel. So now I have a nice rectangle. Where do penguins keep their money? Um, in the snowbank? In the snowbank, you got it. <laughs> So we used um, all four pieces to make those two, these two shapes. Now, whenever I make a shape, I tend to have one end a little more tapered and another end a little more fat. So I want to put the fat end down and the tapered end towards the neck. And I'm just tacking this on. We're going to do a wrap that's going to pull this together. I just need to get it to stay in place. And then one on the butt. Here's a penguin belly fact. Oh, do they have like multiple stomachs? Well, I don't think so. But penguins swallow pebbles and stones along with their food. Scientists believe the stones help grind up and digest their food, and they also add extra weight to help them dive deeper. <laughs> you don't want to eat too many stones and have too much extra weight. <laughs> or you're diving permanently. <laughs> so I want to wrap this, um, and then he will be at this phase. This is a bigger one. Oh, look how light that gray core is. So I'm going to use, um, I'm going to get slightly longer piece, 
more like nine inches so that I have enough to make it all the way around here. And then this is really kind of like pulling all of this together. And I'm gonna do a crisscross. If I just try to go straight around, it's gonna kind of slip. So I'm angling this way and then I'm gonna angle down at the top of the um, taper here. If you need to take any extra steps to get this shape, like add a little extra wool or do another wrap, um, definitely take the time to do that. But this is about the, the shape that you want. Right now he is about an inch and a half wide. Has little butts sticking out more than his belly. Um, yeah, but that I didn't even put butts on my first ones. So we can add additional belly if we decide to. It's about the same, it's just because his feet are coming gotcha. forward. Okay. <clears throat> All right, now we need to make the thighs. And I'm gonna pull a new eight inch piece and split it in half. And this time I'm going to wrap the round side of the Zoli tool about an inch and a half. Out and back, definitely out and back. These shapes aren't quite as big as the butt and belly shape because we're only using one half of an eight inch piece and we used two halves on those plus the wider part of the tool. These don't have to be super tight because you want them to flatten out. And again, if I have a more tapered side, I put it towards the top and the more blunt side towards the bottom and these are going on the sides. And they're just meeting right up to the backs of the feet. Penguins are really amazing. There's all kinds of facts yeah. I did not know. They don't have teeth. They have. Do any birds have teeth? Uh, well, don't they have like barbs? They have spines on the roof of their mouth and on their tongue. Oh, crazy. Those fish aren't getting away, man. No. And apparently, that is why they also need the stomach stones <laughs> to help okay. grind up the food because they don't grind it with their teeth. So, do all birds just swallow stuff whole? Yeah, I think most do, yeah. There's little stomachs do a lot of hmm. digesting. Oh, he's cute already. He needs a name. Okay. With this remaining, I still had a half a piece. It was the nine inch piece that I used to wrap the body. I'm gonna start at one end and fold, it's about one inch wide and just fold a soft pillow. So that was one, two, three, four, I'll do one more, five times. And this is gonna be, they have this little like chest poof. <laughs> and a soft pillow is nice because you can really like shape it onto the, um, onto the sculpture versus a wrap shape usually tends to be a little more firm. So soft pillow is a good technique to have in your arsenal. And so I'm, I'm leaving a little space under the head, like I can still put my finger there, but this is definitely on the chest, not on the belly. I'm gonna use this tiny little piece, make another soft pillow, and just give him a little more, little more belly poof. This, all this core wool steps is like, just really you're just making him the shape you want him to be. Next, we gotta make some, make some wings. Well, let's do a couple of head shapes first. Using the white, Take about four inches. 
and let's quarter that. This is the Serafina White. It's a blend that we make to um, to get like the whitest white that we can. So stretch one of those out so that it's um, more, you know, closer to a half an inch than an inch. And we want to roll a little soft shape to go under the chin here, just start to build the head. So I'm probably gonna use about half of this and I'm just gonna roll it in my hands and I'm going for about um, a half inch, a half inch piece. And then we kind of want to just fill this little hollow that's under his beak here and let the um, tapered sides come up on each side of the head. And just felt them in. So it's kind of given him, like filling in the space, looks like a little beard at the moment. It's a great idea. I'm not working with one because at this point I've made many, many baby penguins, but to have a picture open so you can see the markings and understand uh, what each piece is, is accomplishing. I'm going to further split one of these pieces just because I think we're going to end up using about half of it and I would rather it be long. <clears throat> and we're going to make two two cheeks, two white cheeks. And I'm gonna use the um, the wide end of the face ace. If you don't have the face ace, you can fold in your hand like we just did. But the face ace um, will give you a really nice square, which we end up rounding into a circle. But So we're gonna do that two times. So I'm going around one, two, three, four, and a little bit. And that's about a half an inch of distance. And each of these, I want the tapered end to come onto the white and the round to make a nice round side to the face here. <laughs> so now he looks like a penguin with a toothache. There's a joke in there somewhere in my life. There probably is. I, I was looking again at the raft. Or the raft song. in the waddle. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're, look, we're working on baby penguins, though, and a group of young penguin chicks is called a crush. Crush. I knew there was a word. There's a lot of good penguin words. All right. Take a tiny tuft of black. I'm talking a thumbprint size. And just put it underneath the beak here. Probably a single needle. And it's gonna, you want it to go from cheek to cheek underneath the beak. They have this black marking. All right, now we're gonna move back to the body and then we'll come back to the head. So for the wings, we wanna pull two, like three inch pieces of the core. And I wanna restack those into a nice two inch square. Oh, I need to do a little fiber blending first. Okay, so you have three colors of merino. So the first thing that we want to do is pull, try to grab just the fringe and pull some of this. I think this is earth. <laughs> I always get my, I always get my, this is wolf. And alternate those just to each thin strips. Like a like you took a paintbrush and went. Shoo. 
So I like to do a little darker at the bottom and then a little lighter at the top of the penguin. So now I'm gonna restack to blend these. I'm just gonna pull the ends apart and restack them. And the earth, like I feel like the wolf is a very cool gray and I like it to be a little bit warmer and that's what the, the browner color does. It doesn't take much, like this doesn't need to be absolutely uniform. Now we're going to take a little bit of this, maybe a third, and we're going to blend it with the light gray, which is cloud, I believe. And same thing, just restack. I like to use the lighter color on the wings. Alrighty. Take a third of that and then just pull nice. I'm gonna restack it one more time. Nice thin strip on top of the gray core. like a little glaze of prettier color. So we have to flip these over. I still have the fiber all running horizontal, and now I'm gonna felt the wing shape. If you need a guide, I'm just getting a little stronger, stronger needle there. You can use the end of the Zoli tool, but basically we're making a triangle with a little bit of a rounded edge and then fold the fiber into the center like just flop it all of the way over so that you end up with a really uniform this is a good job for the punch tool if you have one I get it. I got it. Mm -hmm. Anything that's flat is great for the punch tool. And I'm gonna to try to poke it, stab it from the pretty side a little bit more because the gray core will punch through. And then I'm gonna shape the wing. They do have a little bit of shape to their wing. If you wanna take the time to change the shape of this a little bit. You can really just kind of keep Pulling and shaping it, stabbing it. These needles are really strong, so I'm not doing too much with them because they put the fiber right into the, which is nice when you are trying to define your shape. It, it sticks where you've stabbed it, so you can pull the fiber in There's about 40 species of flightless oh. birds. Oh, no. flightless birds. Yes, there's I was going to say, I didn't realize there was that <clears throat> many. There's not. There's only about uh, 17 species of penguins. Oh, just like the hedgies. However, there are about 40 <laughs> different flightless birds, which I found very interesting. I would have thought more birds. I would have thought maybe a little more. More than 40? Like flightless in the world? Birds? Yeah. Yeah. Well, probably a lot of them are in... Where's the... Like New Zealand? Yeah. Most, Australia. Most flightless bir birds live in the southern hemisphere. Kiwis. Yeah, there's like an island that's Emus, just a bunch of ostriches. Birds. That's wild. Oh, what's that great big one with the scary beak? Um, Cassowary? Yes, it sort of almost looks like a cartoon. It's so weird. Okay. We want to put our wings onto, it's gonna overlap the top of the thigh. If you have a ton of extra fiber at the top of your shape, you can pull it off. 
And you don't want it to come all the way down to the foot. You want it to stick off about mid, mid thigh. But it's the fluff at the top that's holding it on right now. Yeah, cassowaries, they really look like dinosaurs. I'm not sure I've ever seen one. And they will mess you up. Oh, you should look it up. They have really colorful heads. I'll have to find a royalty-free image. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. Cassowaries. Very interesting. Dangerous feet, I think. Well, it does say dangerous and attack. <laughs> so there you go. Oh, it looks ostrichy, emu-y. Oh, this one's, I can tell he's gonna be cute already. All right, now we're gonna put our fluff around our, um, we're gonna fluff up our penguin. So he's gonna go from this to this. So we're gonna start with the dark, the dark blend that we made. And when you pull a section, just try to get a really thin, uh, maybe like one inch wide section. If you need to restack it, you can. I mean, not super thin, but manageable. You don't want like a great big chunk. And then put one end down by the feet and stab up towards about two thirds of the way up the fiber. So that's putting me right between the chest and the belly. Milo and John are busy on their phones. Looking well, up this, I'm bird fascinated facts. by the cat. Well, who knows what John's doing on his phone? But. <laughs> I'm taking notes and doing important research, just like always. <laughs> the cassowaries, goodness. Yeah. The most dangerous bird have killed humans with one strike of their feet. Yeah. Even more dangerous than emus, who won the great emu war. <laughs> It's crazy. All right, so that did his belly. I can either, I could probably do two more and go from thigh to mid back and thigh to mid back. I think that's what I'm gonna do. So same step, line the fiber up towards the bottom of the body. And then this is shingling what we're doing. Stab the center one, one third. So I'm stabbing sort of two thirds of the way up and then I'm folding this over and stabbing that on. Okay, <laughs> here's something interesting and timely based on your step. Okay. Penguins spend several hours a day preening or caring for their feathers. Mm -hmm. If they don't keep them well maintained, their feathers would not stay waterproof. Mm. Did you know this? I had no idea they fussed with their feathers so much. Well, I know bird. I know birds do. So they, yeah, they spread oil on their feathers. The oil comes from a special gland near the tail feathers. I'm just imagining a researcher like <laughs> sitting there with a stopwatch and every time he breathes, he starts and stops it. <laughs> oh, that was about fifty percent according to my stopwatch, and then the other researcher is like, "No, no, this one did it." 62%. Th those are the vein penguins. The vein penguin, right? <laughs> so now he's got like a hula skirt of fluff and I did go all the way around. If you need to do another section, just do another section. So now he's got wings, a hula skirt of fluff, and we're gonna switch to the lighter fluff. He's entered his crazy face. <laughs> this is all I have of the what I mixed for the dark, but there's plenty of fiber here, so you just mix you just mix more if you need it. Okay, so now I'm taking the lighter color. So the cool thing about shingling is the fringe on this shape blends with what was underneath it or before it, so it's it's really seamless. So this is going all the way up under the chin. So it's a nice way to create um, an ombre or a change in color that you want to be subtle.
I'm going to let it overlap the, feather, the wings just a little bit. So this fluff is going to hide the wing seams. And then you can felt this to shape it a little bit. It'll still look fluffy. We're not totally creating like a fur look here, but we are just trying to create a really soft um, downy look. All right, so I think I'm gonna put one on the back and then see what I need on the sides. So penguins also molt once a year. Okay. They always molt on land or ice. And until they grow their new waterproof coats, they cannot go in the water. Oh, okay. I was like, why, where else would they molt? But they're just pointing out that they have to be stay in a dry place yes. until the process is done. It might take weeks, and most penguins lose about half of their body weight during Whoa, the molting. Whoa, that's some greasy, heavy feathers. <laughs> that's some <laughs> heavy butt gland feathers. <laughs> I clearly don't don't know a lot about animals. Do most <laughs> birds molt like every yeah. year? A lot of birds molt, yeah. Like they like, lose all their feathers. Yeah, like shedding. Or over time. Like so then they're like naked you birds? Chicken molt? That's why all the chicken feathers are in the chicken coop. They're but usually are they, not like totally naked. That's what I'm really saying. Are they weird. walking around naked? They look really weird because yeah. they're oh, like, okay. Yeah. I haven't spent a lot of time around chickens. So I'm putting a really little piece on each side over just where this, like over the wing area. I have a little, little gap. You need to hang out with David Attenborough a little. Oh my God. What? <laughs> I love that man. So when we were little, when I was little, not when John was little, <laughs> there were three stations and, well, and PBS. And so I was just glued to the nature channels on PBS and Bob Ross. I and voila, we are here. Well, no wonder you have such a calming on-screen presence. Oh, right. <laughs> I think I just didn't watch TV then. <laughs> I waited for the cartoons. Oh my gosh. I loved, loved, loved all the nature shows. I think I liked how, well, I love, I loved animals, but it was such a different, just the the rawness of it and the lack of any uh, are all of our social socialization that humans have to get along like animals don't they don't even uh, they don't and so just to watch that lioness like you know she just took down that zebra she didn't feel bad about it she just <laughs> took it down and ate it it's just just such a different different it's just interesting how how much we have deviated from the laws of the animal kingdom you know to our own or we think we have at least well we've tried really hard <laughs> but at the root of things is a very uh embedded system oh my gosh He's like singing. He's happy feet. Hey. <laughs> okay, we just have a few more face details. And he's done. So we're going to make two triangles. One, we're going to make out of gray just to start to um, fill out the head shape. It looks like this. Goes from here to here. And then we're going to make one out of black. And that's his, that's his markings. So from the gray, I want to get a nice two inch um, square. And from the black, I want to get a nice two inch square. The black is so thick. Okay. And now I'm gonna stab a center line. Let me get the, 
But instead of just making a, these triangles go the opposite way that the feet did, we need to go almost like a little bit of a, it's not really a bell. It's a triangle with a swoop. Like a Christmas tree almost. Mm-hmm. So, well, no, they're... It's I'll a show you why. Yeah, let me make one. And so it has a little bit of a curved curve out because of what the shape needs to do and where it needs to go. It needs to be this shape. Why did the two penguins jump when they first met? I don't know, they were excited. They were trying to break the ice. <laughs> That's a good one. Probably didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna start with the gray. And we're gonna tack this down, right coming down towards the beak, over the middle of the head. And then I love this part, this kind of comes around like a little weird helmet from the Middle Ages. <laughs> so the gray is kind of like a shape maker just to get us started here. And then the black is more the marking. And then if you can, bring your point down around the cheek a little. They have this very circular marking on the side of their face from black to white. All right, so now we're gonna put the black one on and I need it to cover the gray. So I'm just gonna tease the point just a little wider, get the fibers a little loose so that when I put it on, I can really cover all the gray. And if I need to put a little bit of extra wool to make my markings correct, I will, but it is nice to be able to do things with one shape. So I don't have this quite wide enough. That's okay. Um, you'll see why the first triangle is gray and not black in one second. So I still have a tiny bit of beak so close, you are so close mm -hmm. to done. So I'm gonna make a little dent for his eye is in the white, just a little farther up than the beak, not centered on the white, just slightly up. cracks me up that like I guess because of the ways that we wrap and hold things like my animals always <laughs> always end up looking up and off to the right all right I'm going to take a little strip of black and just kind of perfect this uh, marking on the side here can I go get some footage for the intro? sure
He looks demented. Can you take one when his eyes are on? <laughs> so I'm just perfecting the... Well, perfecting is a strong word. I'm just reshaping the markings. <laughs> oh gosh, they make me laugh. They're like... They're all so different. <clears throat> all right, two little black eyes. And I'm just taking like a fluff and rolling it in my fingers. It's really, and you can almost even make them like squinty, like they're cold <laughs> and happy. Instead of making them round, you could try different, you know, you can try different things. So he's squinting because the sun's in his eyes. Well, when it's snowy out and the sun's out, it yeah, it, it gets very bright. But what, like, what the female penguins do is crazy. It's nuts, you know. They go. Do you know all that? Did you I watch don't the know. The <laughs> I thought I thought the fathers were very involved. They are. So the dads. Whew, I don't know which is worse. I don't know which one I would want to do. The dads stand there huddled around the babies. While the eggs like, or the babies? Uh, the eggs and then the okay. babies, I think. Okay. And while the ice is like, and wind is pelting them, and they have to rotate so that the outside dad doesn't freeze so that he gets some time in the middle. Okay. And the moms are out facing the rocky shores and the whales and the to get food and the penguin eating seals yeah and they can't come back until they have the food that the dad and the baby need particularly the baby so penguins are stay at home dads i was gonna say yeah. how did the uh and then women get that job <laughs> yeah and then yeah it's, it's different and then and then when they come back they have to locate each other so there's this whole like calling, dancing, okay. and then when they unite, everybody cries. Well, yeah, it's a rough, that's a rough time. <laughs> Not me, just somebody, somebody cries. And they mate for life. I'm pretty sure, will you check my facts? <laughs> check your facts. <laughs> Before I get reamed on YouTube. <laughs> I did see. This is see... like the fattest little penguin I think I've ever made. I did see male and female penguins look alike. Like there's not yeah. distinguishing male and female characteristics. So the last step is to blend the gray on the back of the head to the body. And I just take a thin amount of gray and let the fringe come up on the back of the head and come down onto the body. And if you have a reverse needle, this is a really fun time to use it. I don't know. Some penguins mate for life. Some often mate with new partners while the old ones are still alive and in the same colony. <laughs> Does that, you mean, depending on the um, species or um, the location or the, I guess it depends on the species, maybe. Yeah, I'm not sure. If you need a transition under the chin, you could put a little blend, but this little penguin is so poofy, is um, he's just got a big wrinkle right here. Will you pass me that pen tool with the black on the handle? So this is my pen tool with my reverse needles in it. And it's just a fun way to, so this is where I'm pulling out the gray underneath the black. And I'm pulling out the black that's underneath this gray. And it makes this look a little less, um, extreme, I guess, or I don't know what the word is. Stark. Yeah, like it blends it together. And then you just gently tap some of that back in. 
This can also be used, like I kind of have a little seam here where the cheek meets the chin, so this can disrupt that. Just eliminates it. That's a plump one. <laughs> this is just a funny plump one. He is, and they do stand up. He's the stabbit is a little wibbly wobbly. That was fun, Milo. That is one <laughs> tasty little penguin. He's going to be well insulated from the snow. So we hope you enjoyed this project. And I also hope that you will check out Serafina Felting Fanfare, which is our Facebook group. And subscribe to our channel because we're always putting out um, new, hopefully very fun and informative tutorials. Yeah. Yeah. What uh else do we need to say? Oh. Um, Facebook, Facebook page is Serafina Fiber Art. Did I say the name of the Facebook group or did I just mention it? I, I don't know. I you, think I did. A Serafina Felting Fanfare, <laughs> just in case. Hey, I have another, I have another joke. You have a closing joke? Yep. All right, go for it. What is black, white, black, white, black, white? Penguins in a line. Uh, penguin rolling down a hill. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds cute. It would be. <laughs> Thanks so much. Bye. Bye.